Swing the swing, swing the swing. And again, you've got to understand there's a Greek word, pro, it's in the New Testament. Proclaim is exactly the same word that's used as preach. It's used interchangeably. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. We have the idea that preachers are the spiritual elite who have done. Now they have a, a unique place. And it says, give honor to whom honor is due. They are servants of the Lord. But when he's talking about, okay, who's called to preach? That's my question. Who's yes. called to preach? We are all ambassadors for Christ, is That's what the right. Word says. Right. We are all to proclaim, as Peter says, the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We're oh, all yeah. supposed to be proclaiming, yes. preaching his excellencies. Thank you, Lord. We're all to manifest the knowledge of Jesus in every place. That's what the Word says. Yes. You don't have to stand behind the pulpit to preach. Those preachers that you think are the guys who are supposed to be out there doing this, no, that's not their job. God has appointed in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of service. So they have a place. Absolutely. You know, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to end on this, but I just want to share with you, many years ago, in our travels, we had gone to... Uh, we we're up in, in uh, we had been in the Bay Area in California. We went over in San Francisco and went over to uh, uh, Modesto, California. Mm -hmm. And I preached in a church there, and uh, it was a it was a bit of a shock for a lot of the people because I stood up and I said that we didn't expect. And and by the way, this I promise you, this I hadn't planned on this. No. This this is what God gave me to speak when I walked up behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I said. Uh, I don't believe this church is growing because of a lack of good preaching. I said, this is not the house of the Lord. And I said, I don't expect to see revival in this place. Well, you know the expression, you could hear a pin drop? You could literally take it. This is a congregation of about 250. Inhale. Yeah, this is a congregation of about 250 people. You could hear them take a breath in and they didn't let it out. There's I mean, no yeah. exhaling. Yeah, no exhaling. Uh, but if you think about it, I said, this is not the house of the Lord. Well, of course it's not. No. God will not live in a house built by the hands of man. We are the house of the Lord. Amen. And it's important for you to understand that. That's right. But I said, this church is not growing as it should because of a lack of good preaching. And I said to the congregation, I said, as soon as I said that, you immediately thought about your pastor. That's right. I said, no, no, he's, he's equipping you to go out and preach the gospel. If you go back into the workplace, if you go back into your schools, if you go back into the places that you go for wherever, and you share the love of Jesus Christ, you will see the body grow as it's supposed to. You're the one who's supposed to be out preaching. You're the one who's supposed to be out proclaiming His excellencies. And then it'll grow. And I said, that's why I don't expect to see revival in this building. Because when true revival happens, it happens out there. In the marketplace, in the workplace, in the home. On the day of Pentecost, all right, they had gathered. Being with no division, being of one mind, they're praying, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Praise God! They take it out to the streets. That's right. The revival happened out in the street, not not upper room. Just remember that. Okay, you don't have to stand behind a pulpit to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is allow the Spirit of God to take what's in your heart and on your heart. Yes. And let that become the confession of your mouth. Share it with somebody mm. today. And you will see what it means when God says, How will they hear if it's not preached? Amen. God has a purpose for you. Yes. It's good to know what you've been saved from. And Paul says in Romans, You've been saved, saved from the from wrath sin. of God. Mm. You've been saved from the sin of your own life. You've been saved from death. But God saved, it's not just important to know what you've been saved from, it's important to know what you've been saved for. That's right. That's and right. you have been saved for the purpose of being Christ's ambassador on this planet. Yes. To be the one who proclaims the excellencies of God. To be the one who brings the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place. Begging them to be reconciled to Begging God the Father. Begging them to be reconciled to God the Father. That's exactly right. Because you like me, like Alice, 
You are an earthen vessel filled with a treasure. Share that treasure as you go along through life. We are His hands and we are His feet. Give the good news to everyone you meet. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you care. Remember wherever you are, Jesus is there.